This chapter is largely a continuation of the previous, but here, Marx is examining the general formula of capital, MCM prime, while trying to find the source of the extra value in M prime, the surplus value. He firstly comments that C to M prime is an unequal exchange. The commodity is being exchanged for more than its value. This contradicts all the laws of exchange, value and money that have already been established. So Marx begins to pick apart the formula to see if it's explainable in another way. We must rather look to see whether this simple circulation by its nature might permit the valorization of the values entering into it and consequently the formation of surplus value. Firstly, he breaks apart the formula into two sections, M to C and C to M prime, but realizes that this creates no difference. Even if the commodity in the middle of this circuit were exchanged for another commodity along the way, for example, M C C M prime, that commodity exchange in the middle is an equal exchange, so still doesn't explain the increased value in the M prime, the surplus value. We know from our experience in the real world that it is true that commodities may be sold at prices which diverge from their values. So Marx works backwards from this to see if he can find an explanation. The sum of the values in circulation can clearly not be augmented by any change in their distribution. Let's imagine somebody selling a commodity for more than its value. For example, 12 pounds instead of 10 pounds. Now, if all sellers do this, when they become buyers again, they'll simply be paying £12 now instead of £10, losing the £2 they initially gained. So while the prices of these commodities will have risen by 20%, there's absolutely no new extra value in circulation. The same can be said if all buyers purchase the commodity below its value. So we see, to purchase above or below value, an unequal exchange, it doesn't create value it just redistributes it. If there's a certain group or class of people that would continually do this, they would only essentially be cheating themselves. Marx gives an example of early Roman colonialism. Towns in Anatolia at the time had to pay tributes of money to Rome, basically protection money or blackmail really, so Rome wouldn't invade them. In response, these towns increased the prices of their products that were being bought from them by Rome. Yet we can see that even though these prices were raised, they were essentially being bought by Rome with the money that the towns had to give to Rome in the first place. What we see then is that the surplus value cannot be created by circulation. And so, for it to be created, something must be going on in the background which is not apparent in the circulation itself. It is therefore impossible for capital to be produced by circulation, and it is equally impossible for it to originate apart from circulation. It must have its origin both in circulation and yet not in circulation. We have, therefore, got a double result. The conversion of money into capital has to be explained on the basis of the laws that regulate the exchange of commodities in such a way that the starting point is the exchange of equivalents. Our friend, Moneybags, who is yet only an embryo capitalist, must buy his commodities at their value, must sell them at their value, and yet at the end of the process, must withdraw more value from circulation than he threw into it at starting. His development into a full-grown capitalist must take place both within the sphere of circulation and without it. These are the conditions of the problem. Hic rodus hic salto. So where does the surplus value originate? 